welcome to Camping Sunday. We did not specifically arrange to have the power out for this experience, um, but it works okay too. So we're, uh, every year we do a Camping Sunday to think about the camps and celebrate the camps that we have in Presbyterian Church and other camps as well that people have experienced growing up. So we try and have a bit of that, that camp experience. We're going to begin with uh, um, Kumbaya. There was one year we didn't do Kumbaya on Camping Sunday and, uh, and I heard about it. So uh, we'll begin with Kumbaya and we'll do the traditional Kumbaya. And there's a progression through it. I'm going to not have my mask on through most of this. I hope that's okay. Um, I'll try and stay back far enough from you. There's a... Is that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you just got bit by a mosquito. <laughs> Appropriate. Um, and we are going to record the service actually and, and see if we can put it up on YouTube afterwards if, if the quality is good enough and the sound quality and stuff. Again, taking out everything that's, that's personal in it. Um, there's a progression for Kumbaya. It moves through. Anyone know what the progression is for the different verses? Sing, no? pray, and cry. Yeah, so we go from singing to praying and then we start crying. No, it actually goes the other way around. So it begins with you were crying, and then we go to praying, and praying leads us to singing, and singing leads us to laughing. So uh, yeah, so it, it, uh, it is a progression, yeah. Um, so let's begin, uh, someone's crying. We'll begin with Kumbaya. Kumbaya. So welcome all to this uh, Camping Sunday. Um, the announcements I've got are uh, about things that are coming up right now. And, and a thank you as well to everyone who's here for the cleanup, uh, especially. 
and thinking about all the trees that have come down, I'm really glad we got the ones that were in the corner uh, out before the, uh, the storm hit. Uh, I don't know if they would have blown over or not, but one of them was actually right touching the roof of the church, one of the trees we took out uh, just a week ago. And also the lilac on the corner there is blooming beautifully now that we've got all the other trees out of it. So everyone, thank you for helping with the cleanup last weekend. Um, coming up next weekend is our anniversary Sunday, and we are going to try to do, we are going to do a, a potluck picnic lunch. Um, so bring your, your potluck items. Um, if the weather's good, we're going to do it outside on the lawn um, and be able to sit spread out from people. So bring your own chairs and things for that. If the weather isn't good, then we'll have the, uh, the food set up on a table downstairs, probably in the middle of the, uh, the old basement. And then you'll pick up your food and you'll go and sit wherever you like in the church. So uh, we'll have tables set up all over the place and you'll be able to sit physically distanced from people in your own bubbles and be able to enjoy a potluck and, and wave to the other people at the table that are near you, uh, try to eat in a safe way. So uh, that's coming up. And then uh, you're going to get an email this week about uh, Doors Open Ottawa as well which is coming on uh, June 4th and 5th. And we've done a virtual tour of the church, so a, a digital tour where you click on uh, different spots in the church and there's a 3D uh, image of the, of the sanctuary or the gathering space or the, the nursery. So you can do this 3D tour, so you get a link to that. But the church will be open uh, physically for people on June 4th and 5th as well. Uh, it's the first time we've been part of Doors Open Ottawa. So people will be able to come and see the church and, and see the addition and, and the work that we've done here um, as part of our 200th anniversary celebrations. So that's coming up and there'll be more things as well. Um, are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Can't think of any, except that I can tell you that uh, about our church camps, Gracefield Camp obviously is open for the summer and uh, if you've not been to Gracefield before, I invite you to go up and explore. There are some uh, little postcard size uh, advertisements for Gracefield out on the, the table at the gathering space. Uh, Presbyterian Music Camp also had our board meeting last Saturday and decided that we are definitely going ahead with in-person uh, camp this year for the first time we skipped two years because of the pandemic and we're happy to be back in person for, uh, for music camp this year um, and also we've heard we're concerned about registrations having been away for two years and not sure if people are going to come back um, we have um, over 110 I think we're at 115 registrations already uh, and we've not had that in May before um, in a long time anyway so we're going to that, that's good registrations for camp, so music camp will definitely be a go ahead this summer. So if you're interested in music camp, um, talk to anyone who's been to music camp. So uh, raise your hand if you've been to Presbyterian Music Camp. Raise your hand if you're going to Presbyterian Music Camp this summer. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> good. So uh, if you're interested in what happens at Presbyterian Music Camp, um, just ask any of us and we'll let you know. One of the traditions we have at camp, and that goes back to uh, when camp first began in 1972, I think, is to begin uh, by lighting the Christ candle. And that's a reminder of Christ's presence in our lives throughout the day, um, and a reminder that uh, Christ is present with us in our lives. And uh, we, when we do that, we sing Gloria, Gloria. And if you want to look it up in your hymn books, it's number 812. At camp, we don't usually get our hymn books, but the words are pretty simple. It's Gloria, Gloria, and it's Chelsea's Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Um, and I've asked Sharon to come forward and light the Christ candle while we see Gloria. Let the floods clap their hands. 
Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. Let us worship God. And our opening song is It Only Takes a Spark. Uh, if you have one of the yellow books, uh, the Praiseways books, it's number 38. Um, if you don't have a Praiseways book, uh, yeah. we... There's more at the back. There's more at the back. Living God, we gather this morning as your thankful people. We come to offer you our praise and our worship. We come to offer you our thanks. We come to thank you that we are safe, that we are here. We pray for those who are having a difficult time this morning. We pray for those who have lost loved ones in this storm. We pray for those who are dealing with uh, other issues and trees falling on their properties. We pray that you'll be with them, O oh God, and bring comfort and We experience your loving presence, O oh God, and the beauty of your creation that surrounds us, even when it overwhelms us. We experience your loving presence in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and the Christian community which brings us together and to which we belong. We thank you for revealing yourself to us, for giving us an experience of your love. As we reflect on your word, as we sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs to you, teach us your wisdom. Equip us to share your love with all people, with our words and with our actions. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel that is shared with us. God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. God loves us and cares for us, and so we care for others. Amen. We have an incredibly significant, uh, theologically significant song to sing next, and that's uh, I Just Want to Be a Sheep. <laughs> How many of you know this song? 
only from hearing me sing it. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, I, I, uh, I remember that I learned this song from uh, some of the young people at Knox Church um, on one of the retreats we had at the Grace Field. Um, and interestingly, for uh, my 25th anniversary of ordination, they sent a video um, thanking me for teaching them this song, because they remember that they learned it from me at a <laughs> retreat. So, uh, I don't think I did teach them, but uh, we'll see. Um, I bet you stand for this one. It's a little bit hard to say. You're able to say. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord the glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. May God add wisdom to the reading from the word. And our second reading is from Colossians 2, 12 to 17. And uh, Alan Powell was going to read today, but uh, he's not here, so Pauline and his daughter will go. One of his daughters. <laughs> Colossians 3, 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. 
just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called, and in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father through him. Thanks be to God for that reading from the Word. This feels like a good time for now. The choir is prepared now. Sunday, a Sunday that we celebrate once a year, 
But I mentioned at the beginning that uh, I switched out the psalm this morning from Psalm 67 to Psalm 29. Psalm 29 always makes me think of the, uh, the ice storm that we had uh, in 1998. And many of you were reflecting on that ice storm as you were coming in today. And remembering what it was like, you know, seeing the trees falling and seeing the damage that was done uh, during that storm. Uh, interestingly, that, uh, that Sunday, the first Sunday of the ice storm, we were in Gananoque at the time. I was a minister at the church in Gananoque. And uh, that was the song that was uh, for that Sunday, right after the ice storm. And all those passages about the, the cedars being ripped up and the oaks whirling and being torn down, it seemed such an appropriate uh, song for that Sunday. But I love the way that song ends with the comforting piece about saying that God is above the storm. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And kind of an acknowledgement that though we go through storms, uh, whether physical storms like we had yesterday or metaphorical storms in our lives, that God is present with us and God walks with us through that, giving us strength and giving, giving us peace as well. So we give thanks for that. So on a camping Sunday, I also chose a passage uh, about from Colossians about what it means to be a community. And uh, I'll ask you how many of you have experience with, uh, with camping in general, just going camping? Yeah? Just about everybody. Yeah? What is it you like about going camping? What is your experience of, of going camping? Yes? Piper? Once I was camping and there was a pool nearby. You were camping and there was what nearby? A pool. A pool. Great. Did you go swimming in the pool? Yeah. Do you like swimming? Oh, I love swimming too. Do you ever go swimming in a lake as well? Yeah? Is that a bit scarier going to swimming in a lake? Yeah. Pools are kind of safe, you know what to expect in the pool. Yeah. Any other experiences of going camping? Things you remember? Yeah, Sam? Uh, whenever we go to music camp, uh, I enjoy the bonfires we have there. Yeah. That was fun. That's fun. Going to music camp and bonfires at night? Yeah. Um, any other experiences of camping? Yeah, somebody? David's cook breakfasts. David's cook breakfast. David's cook's breakfast. Excellent. <laughs> Good. And what do you cook for breakfast? Bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. Excellent. That's something I remember as well from growing up. We used to go up and, and uh, Gracefield Camp has a uh, kids camp that they run, but there's also tent and trailer sites that you can go and rent. And we used to go as a family. I think and lots of ministers from Ottawa did, I think because it was a really cheap vacation. Um, <laughs> and I remember that, uh, that you know, usually during the year, not exclusively, uh, when I was a kid, my mom used to do most of the cooking, but whenever we went camping, um, she did none of the cooking, and my dad took over all the cooking, which was great. And uh, I remember later in life, dad did a whole bunch of the cooking too, but, but that was what I remember from camp, that, that my dad would get up and, and make breakfast and make the meals for us usually while we are camping. Yeah, any other thoughts on camping experiences? So, yeah, yeah. Late nights. Late nights chatting, visiting, playing guitar. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a big part of my experience at, at camp too. And, and there are you know, traditions of Presbyterian music camp about you know, staying up all night. There really aren't curfews and things. So if you want to stay up all night, you stay up all night. And um, the expectations is you get to your workshops the next day, ideally, but uh, uh, that doesn't always happen either. But there's, there's that great opportunity to be, be up all night. And um, You've thrown off my entire sermon, so that's fantastic. <laughs> um, when I think of the Colossians passage uh, about uh, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, immediately that makes me think about our experience of music camp. You know, in other camps as well, we, we, uh, we sing lots of songs and, and uh, things as well, but, but music camp, of course, is, is pretty special. Music camp started uh, in 1972. Um, that was because there was a brand new hymn book that came out in 1972. And they thought a good way to introduce it to the whole church was to have a camp. So they actually arranged to have an organ uh, brought to a camp. It was at uh, Golden Lake Camp, a United Church camp property up near Pembroke. Um, because you couldn't imagine, you know, singing hymns without an organ, of course. Um, and, and music camp started for that, and it was supposed to be for one year, and just to experience the, uh, the new hymn book. And it was set up by a, a whole bunch of people from across the country, but sort of based in Montreal. 
And after that one week of camp, uh, the young people especially who were at that camp said, we, we have to do this again next year. So they said, okay, we'll do it one more year. Um, so they did it the next year, and that was 50 years ago now. And uh, uh, Music Camp has gone on every year since then. Even the last two years with, uh, with COVID, we've done Music Camp virtually. So we're able to actually get together on Zoom, and we're able to send our different musical parts together to form songs so we can sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, even when we can't be physically present with each other, which was a great experience. Um, so that music camp started back then, but the, but the young people said, we can't let it stop. We gotta, we gotta keep it going. And uh, my family went for the first time in 1976, so it's hard for me to think back and believe that we were there for the fourth music camp, and we've been just about every year since then. Uh, we missed a few years, uh, but uh, most years we've been there at, at music camp uh, to enjoy that experience. And, and I also grew up going to uh, a Gracefield camp. Um, that's the camp that I went to, like I said, when I was a kid. Our family used to camp up there, and then um, I was on staff as well. And I volunteered on staff, and I was too young to be there and get paid. And then I was paid when I was able to be older, and then actually stayed on and did construction and managed the camp one fall as well. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of different church camps that, uh, that the Presbyterian Church in Canada has. And uh, it's great that one of the things we've discovered during the pandemic is as we face challenges um, as camps across the country, um, we've discovered that it, it's good to get together and actually see how we can share and how we can um, share our ideas and how we can uh, how we can help each other. So just because of the pandemic, uh, a national um, camping group started, uh, run by the National Church, and we get together once a month and say, how are things going? What are you experiencing in Saskatchewan? What are you experiencing in Nova Scotia? And here's what's happening in Ontario. And it's been a great way to share resources with each other and to see that other people are going through the same sort of thing. And again, that brings me right back to our Colossians passage. Um, because it, the Colossians passage to me is about what it means to be a community. What it means to be a community of faith. We have that experience here in our church. Um, and it's different from camp experience. Camp experience can be uh, quite intense because you're there for one week. Um, you're sharing meals with everybody, you're staying up late and talking and campfires and, and you have a wonderful experience of being at camp and, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Um, and church is a different kind of camp, or a certain different kind of Christian community because we're not living in that intense, close relationship, but we are there with each other for every experience throughout the entire year and over many years. So we celebrate together and when there are babies born, we celebrate that together with baptism. And when uh, people get married, we celebrate that together as a community. When people die, um, we get together and we celebrate their lives, even though it's a sad time. And knowing that you can be together as a community means that the weight that you carry isn't, isn't as heavy. So our Colossians passage is all about what it means to be a community. Um, and, and how uh, you love and care for each other, you forgive each other, and you move on. And it's important that it says, and you sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs to each other. Um, that experience of, of singing together, um, and that experience of being together as a community makes a huge difference in, in our lives. And so this one Sunday each year, we, we talk about the different camps that the Presbyterian Church has, and I encourage you to find out more. And if you're interested in, uh, in the different camps, just let me know. And, get you connected to a church camp. Uh, we are lucky to have Gracefield only an hour and a half away as well, a beautiful 250 acre facility with lots of, lots of room, uh, beautiful lean lake. Uh, but we have lots of other camps as well, with music camp and others. So it's a great opportunity to celebrate the camps that we have and celebrate what it means to be uh, a Christian community, uh, relying on other, each other and forgiving each other and singing together and knowing that God is present with us in all these experiences that we have. And for that, we get thanks. Amen. We have been richly blessed in this life. Uh, one of the ways we give thanks to God is with our tithes and offerings. And uh, I think uh, Peter was going to bring up the offering plate. Peter didn't know that. Peter does now. Um, so as Peter is bringing the offering plate forward, let's join together in singing just the chorus of Freely, Freely. Um, you'll find it on page 774. Um, and let's sing together. Okay. 
got a mosquito.
we will do it in two parts. Um, and I'll leave this side and I'll leave that side. But before we do that, as we go into the world that surrounds us, we know that God is present with us in all that we face. We know that as a community of faith, we gather to love and care for and to forgive each other. We know also that there is no place we can go where God is not present with us. And for that, we give thanks. And may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. May everyone you meet see the face of Christ.